Today we'll be discussing the C-54 Skymaster aircraft, its significance to American history, and how it's associated with Army General Douglas MacArthur and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on this episode of History and Relics. In 1938, the Douglas Aircraft Company decided to produce a four-engine transport plane about twice the size of its twin-engine DC-3. What Douglas developed was the DC-4E that carried 42 passengers by day and 30 by night. The spacious DC-4E had complete sleeping accommodations, including a private bridal room. The DC-4E proved too expensive to maintain so airlines agreed to suspend development in favor of the less complex DC-4, which was not put into commercial service until 1946. With the United States imminent entry into World War II, in June 1941 the War Department took over the provisional orders for the airlines for the Douglas DC-4 and allocated them to the United States Army Air Forces with the designation C-54 Skymaster. The first C-54 flew out of Clover Field in Santa Monica, California on Valentine's Day, 1942. To meet military requirements, the first civil production aircraft had four additional auxiliary fuel tanks in the main cabin, which reduced the passenger seating to 26. The following batch of aircraft, designated as the C-54As, were built with stronger floors and a cargo door with a hoist and winch. The first C-54As were delivered in February 1943. The C-54B, introduced in March 1944, had essential fuel tanks in the outer wings, allowing two of the cabin tanks to be removed. This change allowed for 49 seats or 16 stretchers to be fitted. Douglas built some 1,241 of the DC-4s and its military counterparts, including the RD-5 for the Navy. During the war, C-54s flew a million miles a month over the rugged North Atlantic, more than 20 round trips a day. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the first president to fly in an aircraft while in office. The first aircraft obtained specifically for presidential travel was a Douglas Dolphin Amphibian, delivered in 1933, which was designated RD-2 by the U.S. Navy and based at the naval base at Anacostia, D.C. The Dolphin was modified with luxury upholstery for four passengers and a small separate sleeping compartment. The aircraft remained in service as a presidential transport from 1933 until 1939. However, there are no known records of whether the President actually flew in this aircraft. During World War II, Roosevelt traveled on the Dixie Clipper, a Pan Am crewed Boeing 314 flying boat. He used this craft to fly to the 1943 Casablanca Conference in Morocco, a flight that covered some 5,500 miles in three legs. The idea of designating a specific military aircraft to transport the President came about after the Boeing 314 Dixie Clipper flight in 1943, when officials of the United States Army Air Forces, the predecessor to the U.S. Air Force, became concerned about using commercial airlines for presidential travel. A C-87 Liberator Express was reconfigured for use as the first dedicated VIP and presidential transport aircraft named the Guess Where II, but the Secret Service rejected it because of its safety records. 
A C-54 Skymaster was then converted for presidential use and designated as a VC-54C. This hybrid had a C-54A fuselage with four cabin fuel tanks and C-54B wings with built-in tanks to achieve maximum range. It also included a sleeping area, radio telephone, and a retractable elevator to lift President Roosevelt in his wheelchair. The plane was dubbed the Sacred Cow and it carried President Franklin D. Roosevelt to the Yalta Conference in February 1945, his only trip aboard this plane. He died in April 1945, less than three months into his fourth term. The plane was used for another two years by President Harry S. Truman, and it was aboard this plane where Truman signed the National Security Act of 1947, the legislation that created the U.S. Air Force. The Sacred Cow is now on display here at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base located in Dayton, Ohio. General Douglas MacArthur was another important historical figure that used a C-54 Skymaster. However, he primarily used three different planes during World War II and the Korean War, and all of them were named the Bataan. We believe MacArthur chose the name Bataan for his future planes when he made good on his word to return to the Philippines after suffering a massive defeat there in 1942, whereby 75,000 Filipino and American troops on Bataan were forced to make an arduous 65-mile march to prison camps. MacArthur came back with a vengeance in October 1944 and invaded the island of Leyte. By February 1945, U.S. and Filipino forces recaptured the Bataan Peninsula, and Manila was liberated the following month. In November 1943, General MacArthur obtained his own personal transport, a Boeing B-17E Flying Fortress Heavy Bomber with a B-17F nose piece and serial number 41-2593, which he named Bataan. It was later known as Bataan 1. It was assigned to the 5th Army Air Force, but its ultimate fate is unknown. It was likely scrapped or otherwise disappeared. We're going to jump now to the third Bataan plane that MacArthur used, nicknamed 613. In 1948, the U.S. Air Force ordered 10 Model L 749 Constellations from Lockheed and designated them as C. 121As. The 10 aircraft, serial numbered 48-0608 through 48-0617, were delivered between December 1948 and the first part of 1949 and were based at Westover Air Force Base as part of the Atlantic Division of the Military Air Transport Service, or MATS. Within a short time, eight of the aircraft, including the Bataan, were involved in the Berlin airlift, making almost continuous Atlantic crossings, delivering cargo to England or Frankfurt, Germany. These eight flew over five million miles during the airlift. Shortly after the conclusion of the airlift, the C-121s were withdrawn from service and flown to Lockheed for conversion to high-speed VIP transports for the U.S. Air Force. Number 613 became the personal aircraft for General Douglas MacArthur and was used by him during his time as the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers during the Korean War. The plane is now located at the Plains of Fame Museum in Williams, Arizona. And now let's circle back and talk about MacArthur's second Bataan plane, the Bataan II. In April 1945, General MacArthur adopted a new transport, a Douglas C-54 Skymaster transport, converted to a VC-54E and serial numbered 44-9027, which he named Bataan II. General MacArthur continues to use a VC-54E as a personal transport in his role as Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers, as well as his other responsibilities as Commander-in-Chief Far East and Commanding General U.S. Army Far East 
during the Japanese occupation and into the early part of the Korean War in his added roles as Commander-in-Chief, United Nations Command. The next bit of information in history should set out the need to correct what we thought we knew. Most history books have it that the Korean War started on Sunday, June 25, 1950. Well, it's true that everything should have a start or an end date, but if you've ever given any thought to the beginning of the Korean War, or any war for that matter, then it's likely you've asked the question, how on a particular day did someone just decide to start a war? The answer is much more complex than that, but believe this, the tensions and events that led to the Korean War started long before June 25th. I say this too because of some other history books out there that say that General MacArthur was never in Korea prior to the Korean War breakout and criticizes him for not really being in the know as to what was transpiring until much later. That's wrong because of this photo and a series of others taken by my father, Corporal Robert W. Hefner of the 5th Army Air Force, stationed at Kimpo Air Force Base, Korea, 1947 to 1949. This is a photo of MacArthur's VC-54E Skymaster, the Bataan II, sitting at Kimpo Air Force Base, in late 1948 or early 1949. Here is a series of other photos taken by my father of MacArthur's plane at Kempo Air Force Base and in a couple you can see the Bataan's nose art as well as the serial number 49027 on the tail. Now again this is 1948-1949 well before June 1950. It's not known why or what occurred here at Kempo. My father never said. But the photos here and knowing when these photos were taken and by who speaks volumes. This baton was used by MacArthur until the early part of the Korean War when he upgraded to the 613. As for this Sky Master, it was next used by U.S. 8th Army Commander General I.D. White. On or about January 24, 1957, General White and his wife were taxiing for takeoff at Kempo Air Base in Korea when the plane caught fire. Smoke shot out from part of the fuselage and a starboard inboard engine. General White and his wife escaped, but the plane was lost. Following World War II, commercial airlines placed more than 300 civilian DC-4 transports into service. These DC-4s, along with C-54s converted for civil use, carried more passengers than any other four-engine transport. Many other C-54s were modified for use in civilian firefighting and air tanker roles. This included fitting tanks inside and under the fuselage and the fitting of dumping and spraying equipment, also on the wing's trailing edges. C-54s continued in this tanker role until the late 1990s. Their civilian transport roles for some of these DC-4s and converted C-54s continued on through 2014. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. So until next time everyone, this one's History.